Ladies and gentlemen, so the countdown for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is upon us. We've got less than two weeks before the premiere of the new season airs, and we're all pretty excited. And I'm talking about the fans of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I know humanity in general is not too excited, just so I don't get those kind of comments down below. But yeah, the new season is about to dawn upon us and we're all gonna fully enjoy it. But one thing that we need to talk about over here is the impact of the events of Endgame on the new season of Marvel's Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now one thing I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna start with the non-spoiler-ish part, which is basically the synopsis of the premiere of the season. I'm gonna talk about that real quick, then jump to the events of Endgame, talk about whether or not they're gonna impact the new season of the series. Now before I get started, please note that 5 minutes into the upload of this video, it is gonna be indexed in the pinned comment. That would mean that if you want to skip all the synopsis talk and go directly to the endgame talk, you could just hit the link in the pinned comment and jump right into it, the endgame part. But let's now get started with the synopsis of the premiere of the season. Now as per the usual with the synopsis, the synopsis of the premiere of the season has got a header and a body. And the header reads, a new anime emerges on the shocking season premiere of ABC's Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Friday, May 10. Okay, so we all watched the trailer of the season, we watched the teaser that released afterwards, which really didn't add much, and we did watch the sneak peek that released right after WonderCon. We all read all the interviews as well, so we kind of know that this emerging anime is basically a group of humanoids. Now, these humanoids are super strong, that much is indicated by the interviews, that much is indicated by the trailer, Mac even mentions it on the trailer. Now among these humanoids is the new Phil Coulson or the new character portrayed by Clark Gregg and the name of the character is basically Sarge. Now I did talk about Sarge, I did talk about how he might have something to do with a demonic dimension like basically Sarge from the comics and that might lead up to bringing back the Ghost Rider on the upcoming season. Now just so I don't get your hopes up when it comes to, you know, the Ghost Rider showing up on the upcoming season, there are two things to consider over here. Number one, the fact that Gabriel Luna is starring in the new Terminator movie. And number two, he could not have filmed anything during his filming of the new Terminator movie because the new Terminator movie was basically filming outside the US and it was filming in parallel throughout the period that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season 6 was actually filming. So if I'm right about Sarge and, you know, the upcoming season will give us the Ghost Rider once again, it's not happening at the beginning of the season, it's not happening in the middle of the season, but rather close to the very end, maybe even just the finale. But just remember over here, all of this is pretty much based on the idea or the theory that Clark Gregg is portraying the role of someone who's basically connected to a demonic dimension, to a darker dimension. Now based on everything that's been stated so far, there are two mercenaries on this season, Jacko and Pax, and both of them do seem to be part of that humanoid group. There's also Butterfly, and Butterfly is a new character and she's portrayed by Brooke Williams. Brooke Williams is the actress who portrayed the role of Hannah Jones on the third and fourth seasons of 12 Monkeys. Now this one, we do know that she's working with Sarge because we did see that much on the sneak peek from the premiere of the season. That though was all the talk about the header and all the talk about that anime that emerges on the premiere of season 6, so let us take a look at the body of the synopsis. Scattered across the galaxy, the team works to find their footing in the wake of losing Coulson in the spectacular season 6 premiere. Okay, so pretty much everything that we read on this part of the synopsis is something that we know. Scattered across the galaxy is basically a hint of the idea that they are going to be split into two teams at the beginning of the season. One team's in space, that's Daisy and Gemma, along with Piper and Davis, and they are looking for icicle fits. And the other half of the team is the team back on Earth, that's Yo-Yo, Mac and May, and they're facing that new emerging enemy. Now, the other part over here, trying to find a footing in the wake of losing Coulson, that's about two things. The first one is going to be about grief and we're going to be seeing the biggest doses of grief with May and with Daisy. And then with the rest of the team less Fitz, we're going to be seeing smaller doses because I'm expecting this is going to take a huge toll on Fitz once they get him back. But the second one is all about the big surprise, you know, the other Coulson, someone who does exactly look like their Coulson showing up out of nowhere. That's going to take a toll on them, that's going to hit them hard. But alright though, the starring list, Clark Gregg, McNaughton, Chloe Bennett, Liz Anstridge, Ian DeCastacar, 
Henry Simmons, Natalia Cordova Buckley, and Jeff Ward. Nothing odd about this, except if you did not know the fact that Jeff Ward has been promoted to a series regular for season 6, then yeah, he's been promoted. But the guest starring list, we've got Maximilian Nozinski, and he's the one who portrays the role of Davis, so we're gonna be seeing Davis on the premiere. The second one is Brianna Venskis, and Brianna Venskis is basically Piper. Joel Stoffer, which means we're gonna be seeing Enoch on the premiere of the season. So yeah, they're gonna be finding Enoch, they're not gonna be finding Fitz, and that's indicated by the trailers, but nonetheless, they are going to be finding Enoch, and we're probably gonna get an understanding of what happened to Fitz, why is he not in the pod when we watch the trailer. Now there are many names over here that I see on this list, however though, the only one that we know of is Brooke Williams. The rest of the names we've got no idea about, however though, I'm thinking over here, two of them are gonna be Jacko and Pax, and the third one is gonna be Agent Whatever, you know, the guy we watched on that sneak peek. Alright, so we're done with the synopsis, and it is time to talk Avengers Endgame and the impact of the movie on the upcoming season of the series. Now, if you haven't watched Avengers Endgame, this is your spoiler warning, so make sure you tune away, browse away, do whatever you do, just don't come complaining. But alright, we've got a problem. We've been told that this is set after Endgame, or at least that is insinuated during the Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. panel at WonderCon, and the person who, by the way, insinuated that was Jeff Loeb. However, though, we were told that there is only a one-year time jump over here, and when we watched the movie, we got to see a five-year time jump. So are they going to address the events of Endgame? Because Endgame did not go back in time and sort it out in 2018, they did not erase the snap, they let the snap be, they let everything be, and they brought back everyone in 2023. Okay, there are two ways to look at this, and you're gonna hate me for one of them. The first of these is that Jeff Loeb had no clue there's a five-year time jump with Endgame. That would inherently mean that Jed, Marissa, and Jeff, the producers of the series, had no clue as well what's going on with Endgame. That would mean as well that we're losing the connection with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That would mean that the series would be out of sync with the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It would be all kinds of messed up. Okay, so there are certain facts that do support this kind of premise. The first of which is during the 100th episode panel last year, they did indicate, the producers did indicate, that they only get wind of the premise of an upcoming Marvel Studios movie, like three to maximum five months before the movie releases. Now, a five-month advance notice would make them privy to this information, you know, the five-year time jump around the end of November, and the series finished filming its sixth season around the beginning of December, like first ten days of December. So, best case scenario, there was no room to change anything. If we're gonna hear about it, we might hear about it on the finale. Like, they basically changed a couple of lines on the script, like last moment. Now, if that were to be the case, then the possibilities are endless, because they're gonna have to address that on Season 7, unless they do a four-year time jump. The other possibility over here is we're gonna get to see them, you know, slap a five years later timestamp on the premiere of the season, and we're just gonna have to accept it. However, though, the question that remains over here is what's going on with Fix. They haven't saved him in five years. He might not have been snapped, so what's going on with him? What happened to him throughout those five years? But there's another option to deal with all of this. They're already filming season seven, so they could go back and film some scenes for season six, and these scenes would basically act as a referencing point. They reference Infinity War, they reference Thanos, and they talk about all the people that they lost in the process. Okay, the team is still intact, lucky them, but they lost other agents. Another option over here is Jeff Loeb knew all along and he was just lying, he didn't want to spoil Endgame, so he was basically telling us it's a one-year time jump, and the reality is it's a five-year time jump. I know, some of this is really depressing, some of this is really sad, Marvel Television and Marvel Studios are kind of separate entities. So no matter how much they try to work together, no matter how much they try to stay in sync, to a certain extent of course, they are bound to mess up. But let us though talk option number two. Let's assume that they knew it all along, they worked it out in such a way that they're working the snap into all of it. Okay, so the question is how would they do that? There are multiple ways they could do that. They could start with a one-year time jump and then do a four-year time jump. In this case, they could sacrifice Deke, because during WonderCon, Jeff Ward did state that he's not on the first episode, or at the very least, he did insinuate that. Haven't watched that thing in a while, so I don't remember exactly what were the words used there, but they did indeed indicate that he's not there on the premiere of the season. But that's just option number one, and I think option number two is the more viable option over here. 
Option number two is they are doing a one-year time jump. They are going to mention the snap, they are going to mention the dusted people, but they are not going to do it on the premiere, they're not even going to do it on the second episode of the season, because hey, don't spoil the end game. So yeah, they're gonna wait until episode 3 or maybe even episode 4 before they start mentioning the snap, mentioning the fact that a lot of people have been snapped, and then they can move on from there. Now I do understand that a lot of people would be like, hey, why didn't they snap someone out of the team? Isn't it 50%? The 50% does not really have to, you know, hit the same entity or the same agency or hit the people that we know on the series. And it's not really viable to do that. I mean, this isn't a movie. This is a series. A lot of people are contracted to, you know, be actors on that series. And it is a big problem if you can't use those actors for an entire season. You're basically telling them, okay, you know what, you can be here for this entire season, you don't have a job, don't get another contract with another TV series or another network because, yeah, we're gonna need you back here for season 7. That's really kind of stupid, and I can imagine any one of the AOS family flipping everyone else the finger if they did tell them something of the sort, no matter how familiar they are. So the answer is no, none of the members of the team will have been snapped. Yeah, they're gonna talk about other people who have been snapped, you know, maybe other S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, but none of them will be snapped in this case. But there are two more things that we could think of here. The first one is was Coulson snapped? Now the issue with snapping Coulson is he wouldn't have spent a single moment with May because considering the timeline, he should have been snapped right away, like as soon as they landed in Tahiti, as soon as the, you know, credits rolled out, like 10 minutes, 1 hour, 2 hours, 10 hours tops, and he would have been snapped. Now that would contradict with what May said on the trailer, we got more than we wished for, that wouldn't make any kind of sense. Now I know that a lot of fans are insisting that Melinda May is pregnant with Coulson's child, but I don't think that's the case. Considering the insane amount of action that we do see on the sneak peek to the upcoming season, it makes absolutely no sense. That was pretty much a recipe for losing the baby, like right away. But then again, maybe it's there to be a red herring, like we've got more than we wished for. Like they expected to get nothing the moment they discovered that he was sick but then they got those 10 hours or 15 hours, no matter how many, they just met them with gratitude. We expected nothing, but we got something out of all of this, and that's good enough. That last bit though is of course a very highly unlikely option, highly doubtful. But nonetheless, if they do play it right, Marvel's Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. has got themselves five entire years, like five years to just deal with everything they want to deal with, and they won't even have to reference the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not even a single time. And if they do it, they're doing it for the fans, but nonetheless, they won't have to. Now, considering Spider-Man Far From Home is going to be happening right after Endgame, this scenario does sort out the issue of Nick Fury possibly being the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, yeah, we kind of got two scenarios that kind of reduced the possibility of contradictions between the movie side and the TV side. Now one final thing that I've already mentioned on, you know, two of my Endgame videos, but I want to mention it again here in the context of AOS. The fact that Endgame had a cameo of James Darcy as Edwin Jarvis, that was a very good move. A great improvement. That's acknowledgement of the TV side. I know a lot of you wanted something out of AOS, but nonetheless, that's a good thing. After all, Agent Carter did get its backdoor pilot on none other than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so that's a great improvement, that's something we should take as a win, and that's something we should enjoy. It's all still connected. But that being said though, I'm really hoping for the second option, I'm extremely worried it would end up being the first option. Hopefully though, they had all the information they needed as they filmed this season, and hopefully they managed to stay connected to the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe. That being said though, my work here is done, so let me know in the comments down below how you think it's gonna work, how you think it's gonna play on the new season of Marvel's Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. Let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, subscribing to this channel, and make sure as well you enable notifications in order to get updates from my new videos, new community posts, and new live streams. But until the next time that you tune in for another one of my videos, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or otherwise, Thank you so much for tuning into this video and have a great day.